today is a sad day as we on mtt we choose to do a eulogy of an already done funeral but again this doesn't translate to how much people know about this dead if you're wondering already and you didn't see the video title by some hunky punky miracle we're talking about lg and as the saying goes life is good life was good for this company the company in april announced their departure in the mobile space after a long and worthy battle of bringing competition in the space for a very long time and also making some first move takers that has now become the standard if not for all most phones in the tech space this is a eulogy as said earlier and as such the bad take of a person is usually not expressed so i won't state the fact that lg's failure in the mobile space was due to factors such as failed push in their marketing space of their devices adapting and making sure things that worked were done better making sure you could distinguish their namings easily <coughs> sony phones and pricing of devices in an already flooded flagship killer space but again we will talk about the giant steps that made the great marks in the mobile phone space to start LG was the starter in the capacitive touchscreen space in 2006 with the release of the LG Prada. Another point to note that this shine was easily taken when the iPhone was officially announced in 2007. The LG Optimus 2X was the first dual core processor that offered 1080 video recording in 2010. We are now flooded by phones with octa core and more, and the risk keeps getting better and better thanks to LG. The Optimus 3D was the first phone with a multiple rear camera and I would dare you to mention a high-end phone in 2021 with not at least two rear cameras. LG G2 was also the first to introduce the double tap to wake on screens which we all enjoy now. The LG G3 was the first to introduce QHD screens and smartphones followed by the LG V10 which was technically the first to introduce dual screens on smartphones. This is beautifully being done by Samsung in current trends with the release of the Galaxy Fold. LG G5 was the first ultra-wide camera in the smartphone. The LG G6 was the first ultra-wide display, 18 by 9 aspect ratio as it's popularly known. And this introduced an era of tall screens with smaller bezels. And then there was the LG V40, which was the first to have all focal length of a camera in the phone. To be precise, a main camera, an ultra wide and a telephoto. LG had the guts to take bold moves towards good directions, but I guess it wasn't enough as the competition caught up, so did the desire for more and better. Also, the let's try something new game was now set on a standard where it really had to work for people to join your camp. And not to forget was the factor of flagship killers as mentioned earlier who were ready to cripple you in price for something which was good and cheap. To end this eulogy, I would say LG's impact in the mobile space was a worthy one and generally will be missed as we have just lost one competitor who failed in the strategies of marketing and others but was a big gun to compete with when it came to innovation. This is one thing that makes smartphone hardware the more interesting, not the slabs we all might end up with if design innovation was to stop. This has been Melon and before I leave the pulpit for the next section, Please don't forget to subscribe to MTT and leave a like and a comment for LG and the channel as well. Because I'm sure our next speech would be for a party in the tech space.